Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Oxygen Not Included in the Super Duper Grouper Base. In the last video, we set up a proper Dreco farm with hydrogen and carbon dioxide and we wrangled up a couple of little Drecos. And these guys, using the hydrogen, will be able to grow more scales, which we can shear off for some reed fiber. But most importantly, by feeding them mealwood, there is a chance they are going to have glossy drecklet eggs. 13% chance on that one, and 19% chance on that one. The odds should go up over time. It's gonna be a little while, but that's A-OK -okay with me. Eventually, this will turn into nothing but glossy Drecos, and our problem uh, with power will be solved for pretty much the entirety of the game, which is gonna feel really nice. We also enclosed the natural gas geyser so that we could start ventilating some of the natural gas into a new generator and supplement some of our power needs, uh, which is great. However, we are having issues with gas vents being overpressured, and uh, also just sort of in general, I don't think this is going to be enough gas. I mean, the natural gas geyser, let's take a look at this here. Its eruption period is 299 cycles every 539. So, like, it's up more than half the time, but there's lots of time in between the activity. So, and even then, I'm not sure it's producing enough gas to do us a lot of good. So, this is a good supplement for our power, but it's not going to solve our problem. And in the meantime, we're starting to run out of coal pretty quickly, and that scares me a little bit. Something I'm going to go ahead and do, which will help a little bit, is we're going to increase the size of this ranch. That's something I saw some people recommend, and I think it makes a lot of sense. The room size can be a maximum of 96 tiles. We do the dig, I can find out what that looks like here. So 96 tiles would stop right here. So we need to increase this a couple levels. Why do we want to do this? Mainly because if we do, then I think these guys will stop feeling so cramped and we can have more hatches in the same space. That's important because if they're feeling cramped and their reproduction rate goes down, so I can basically only have three or four at a time. I need like eight or nine. So yeah, we're gonna increase the size of the room. It doesn't do anything else for us as far as like production, but it's going to let us have more hatches, which means more coal, which means the coal generator is able to stay on long, which means we are going to survive a bit longer. So that's probably the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do today. There we go. Okay, so does this work? Let's go to rooms, and yes, we are now up to 96 tiles. Are they still cramped? No, this one is glum, but that's not a big deal. The important thing is, now they're not cramped, now they'll lay more eggs, now we're going to end up having a lot more coal production. Excellent. What else should we do? Well, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to go ahead and dig out a rest of this biome and start walling off some of the warmer areas. We're gonna wanna make sure that we manage our heat economy pretty effectively, and that means lots of insulation. We're kind of at a stage of the game where it wouldn't be a bad idea to fully insulate this entire zone right here, and this becomes the bulk of my base, and keep the temperature well under control. Another thing I wouldn't mind doing, though, is start thinking about our long-term power needs. Since, you know, we're having some trouble with all of this over here, and coal's not going to last forever. But, even if we do get this all solved, I'm going to need the ability to actually handle higher power loads. Right, you can kind of see it here. We're seeing little flickers of orange on our power grid. And that's basically saying that too many things are operating right now, which are taking up some power. And if we ever get to a high enough level, it's going to start causing damage to a lot of stuff. Consider them blowing up. So basically, we need to find a way to deal with the wattage of so much power draw more effectively. And the only real way to do that that I know of would be to start making use of power transformers, right? What you do is you set up a bunch of heavy watt wires somewhere like this, you know, right? And then you have these things connecting up to a power transformer, and the power transformer then takes that huge amount of wattage, let's say I'm producing 6,000 watts, and it reduces how much is able to go through on this end to only 1,000, so nothing downstream here gets broken. Right, it's a pretty darn important thing to be able to get figured out, and we're gonna want to do that, but the most convenient way I know how is to set up big areas outside of the insulated base with different, like, layers matching up with, you know, my regular layers over here, and then having transformers on almost every level, and then you just have tiny little grids hooked up to the transformers, which are part of a much larger power line network. It's gonna take me a long time to actually build the dang thing, though, so that's gonna be, you know, a lot of fun, but... I think it needs to be done. It, 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 we, we may not have the power to support it yet, but long term, I'm gonna need it, and I can't turn on things like my fertilizer synthesizer and stuff because I'm terrified we're gonna draw too much power. By the way, I think I figured out what was wrong with the Atmo suit docks. Something I was not aware of is that the dock itself can store like 200 kilograms of oxygen, 
which is kind of a lot, really, when you think about, like, the density of uh, oxygen. It's a lot to put in here. But anyway, I'm pretty sure all the oxygen we were sending over here was getting to the suit, but then immediately discharging into the Atmo suit dock. And once this thing gets filled up to 200, that's when it would start filling up the suit itself. I think. Something I would like to do is also have just generally more oxygen. We've got a lot of carbon dioxide floating down here at the bottom, and it's a bit much, if I'm honest. Um, and I'm not really a huge fan of using algae terrariums long term. They're a good, you know, temporary measure at best. Beyond that, we should probably get rid of it. One thing we could do is make use of the carbon skimmer. This does use water in order to filter carbon dioxide out of the air. And that might sound terrible, but look how much freaking water I've still got. I'm still trying to use this stuff and drain everything down here. By the way, what the heck? Ah! Dang it. I should probably turn this sucker off. Didn't mean to do that, just wanted to have a nice, uh, smooth water lock. Uh-huh, uh-huh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Kept that going for a little too long. Anyways, you who? Point is, using up some water in order to get rid of some carbon dioxide is not the worst idea in the world, I think. What I don't remember is if these things... Actually, maybe that is a terrible idea. Do these things uh, create polluted water? Oh, it does. Oh, never mind. I don't like this idea after all. Okay, maybe the best thing to do then is to literally just start producing oxygen. Electrolyzers. Yeah, the thing I just don't like about electrolyzers is you need a method of cooling to go along with it. If you don't, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Right, because it didn't used to be this way, but electrolyzers now emit the uh, hydrogen and the oxygen at uh, 70 degrees Celsius, which is fairly toasty, especially if you're just dumping it in the base. You want everything to be around 30 degrees or less. You go to 70 degrees air, pretty quick this whole place starts getting a little bit too toasty and things stop working. So we have to have a way of cooling all of that down. The only way I know how to do that right now is either making use of the cool slush geyser and basically just turning this into a giant cooling pod, or maybe make use of the frozen biome. Which isn't a bad idea, but it's a huge endeavor. Both of them, honestly. Let's take this one step at a time. We're gonna be okay on water, we're gonna be okay on carbon dioxide for a bit longer. Let's instead focus on just getting our power situated. Maybe next video we come back and take care of all that. I did, by the way, just spot a bit of a problem. I'm not sure how it came to be, but we have food poisoning germs in my clean water pool. I don't really know what happened to drop these germs in here. It's obviously kind of a bit of a problem. Uh, somebody somehow apparently must have had some germs on them and then just took a bath. Yeah, I really couldn't tell you what happened there. So that's an issue. Uh, we need to find a way to clean that. Hmm. Most immediate way I know how is to make use of some of the chlorine gas that we've managed to store up. Create like a little chamber, right, with a water reservoir sitting inside, right, a li liquid reservoir. Fill this sucker with chlorine gas, let it kill all the germs, and then pump the water back in? Oh, gosh dang it. Bicel, <sighs> how'd you even do this? No, like literally, did you crawl into the water pool and then build this? At this point, this is your own dang fault. Whatever, go ahead and just take care of this. Get yourself out, don't suffocate on your account. But gosh dang it, these dupes, dude. Sometimes it just boggles the mind how unbearably dumb they can be. So let's be extremely careful not to accidentally start pumping chlorine gas into the base. That would be very disastrous. We're gonna take some gas pipes, hook it down here. And that should be all it takes to start offloading chlorine and then... A uh, baboom! We have ourselves a chlorine atmosphere that is currently being locked up. And this sucker is officially locked. No one even bother going inside here unless I specifically say so. Thank you very much. Alright, so we have unbreathable chlorine inside of here. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go to our plumbing and we are going to try... ...just siphoning a bit of water in over this away. Start filling up the reservoir, and we'll keep an eye on the germs and see what happens. Now, ideally, what we could do at some point is set up, uh, let's see, a liquid pipe germ sensor. So instead of having this little switch that I have to send a signal to to turn off the liquid shutoff, right, and make sure that nothing gets through here, this would automatically detect any germs, and as long as germs are there, it doesn't let the water leave and go back into the reservoir. But this takes plastic! And until the gosh dang gl uh, Dracos decide to have a glossy baby, there's nothing I can do about that, dang it. Even so, let's keep an eye on this. So some water's gonna start going on over here. I have a negative signal here, so nothing should be going through. 
which means that this liquid reservoir is now storing many kilograms, okay? And if I take a look at this, storing surface water, I'm not seeing a lot of information about germs here. It says that there's only 70 some of germs here. Is it killing them about as fast as it can get it? That actually might be the case. I think the germs inside the liquid reservoir might be dying faster than uh, we can pump more water into it. And this thing can store a lot of water for the record, like a lot of water. So I think, I think if we were to use this, we could theoretically cycle through like the entire huge, many, many tens of thousands of kilograms of water and solve our germ problem. Oh boy, that's gonna take so stinking long. Hey, look, here's part of the problem. Look at this. Who brought their dirty hands to the pitcher pump? Aha, the answer. It is Bysel, you. You're probably the culprit. Actually, it's probably got something to do with the composting over here. Creating a whole load of germs over in this direction. Oh gosh. I mean, I did dismantle the sink going this way because it was starting to get really annoying having to deal with it. But you know what? Maybe it's time to go ahead and revitalize this sucker and make sure we don't have any issues with some stupid germs getting tracked into the base because I'm about positive that's how this stupid thing happened in the first place. In the meantime, while that's all going, one thing I'm keeping an eye on is my food, and we are not getting as much gristleberry as I kind of expected. The pickled meals are still sort of hanging around, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if we're necessarily keeping up with our food needs because we've run out of fertilizer, so my double growth rate is basically gone at this point. So, let's start thinking about getting some new food production, something I would not mind having access to would be some of those delicious mushrooms we have been talking about before. I think that could end up being really good for us. So let's go ahead and lay out a whole bunch of farm tiles. You don't need an absolute ton of space. However, something I am going to want is at least a bit of space dedicated to placing a storage bin filled with slime and water so that the germs ideally don't get out and around. But our fertilizer for mushrooms, which is slime, is easily accessible from within the farming area. Okay, so the farm at this point should be set up. I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm going to re-enable the building here for this wash basin because I am going to turn on a storage bin here specifically for the purpose of storing the slime as I was talking about before. And I am pretty confident that simply picking up the slime and moving it over here is gonna create a bit of a slime lung infestation, which I'm very worried about. So I wanna make sure that we are able to wash our hands as much as possible and prevent that from spreading all too much. Now over here, let's go ahead and place down the dust cap fungal spores. That's what I'm looking for. So, uh, whoops, I didn't actually hit uh, plant. There we go, copy settings. Let's go ahead and plant these in all these locations like so. And bada boom. With carbon dioxide and darkness and slime as fertilizer, this should all turn into a bunch of nice little mushrooms. And then with those mushrooms, we can fry them in the electric grill because everyone loves fried mushrooms. They're delicious. So let's track this a little bit. Yeah, Alpha just picked up some slime and then immediately got infected with a million freaking germs. Now running down over here and lo and behold, infected once again. Yowzes, dude. Okay, I'm not a fan of this arrangement. Um. We'll disinfect as much as we can. You cannot, cannot leave slime here. Bad burrito, you bad boy. Get over here, wash your hands in the sink. Stop tracking around slime lung germs. You should have learned this lesson. It's a horrible feeling to be infected with slime lung. Think of your fellow dopes. Oh my God, they're all idiots. They're all idiots. They're picking up slime and they go over here like, I can't catch my breath. And they drop the slime, which creates more germs and polluted oxygen and ah! God, this stuff gets out of control so stupidly fast, you idiots! All right, what's the damage? Have we more or less got it contained finally? Yes, disinfecting a few locations, having to keep an eye on people and make sure they wash their hands, but for the most part, we got that under control. That could have been a lot worse. The idea here, of course, is that uh, submerging slime in a bunch of water is a pretty good way of making sure that the germs don't go, like, anywhere, like, at all. Actually, I don't even know if maybe I should just literally drop it here. Should I just drop it in the water pool? That seems to have more or less worked here. Um, yeah, actually, I'm kind of thinking that we should do that. What I might do is disable this as a building, this uh, storage bin, and make this so this is sweep only. And then we'll just drop. Uh, well, I say that. Hang on. It seems to have reinfected this entire area in a huge way. 
maybe, I don't know. The exact germ mechanics are a little bit weird. And don't always work the way you would expect them to. So let's try disinfecting that and see if that helps. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, actually this seems to work. Uh, there's a lot of germs. We got like 13 million germs that are sitting here right now in one giant pile, but where can they go? And the answer is nowhere. Perfect, okay. So as long as people wash their hands every time they come in here to work on the mushrooms, should end up being a-okay. Anyway, okay, so that's gonna take care of our food long-term, very energy efficient. We're taking care of the germs. Now let's get back to the whole power situation. So how are we doing on coal? Not great. I do not have much left at all. Um, I found a small deposit of coal we could probably take advantage of over in this direction, and I think I will, but we're still getting nowhere near enough out of all of these hatches. Nowhere near enough. Partly because these dang eggs need to actually, you know, hatch. That would be great. Oy. Oy. We got a lot of eggs, though. We got a lot of eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no glossies either. Gosh, dang. Just no luck. No luck at all. Yeah, um, hmm. I'm not really totally sure what the freaking heck I'm gonna do about power, if I'm honest. If I can't find a way to get more consistent coal, and I can't find a way to get a lot more gas, because I'm dependent on a natural gas geyser that's still not gonna be active for a bit longer. Speaking of which, let's take a look at ventilation. See, wait a minute. Hold on. I've got a fair bit of gas sitting here doing absolutely nothing? That can't be right. Hold the phone. What is this What is this smart battery set to? Oh, no. Oh, no! I had this backwards. All right. When power gets really low, like we're at 5%, that's when you emergency turn on the coal generator and go up to like 50%. What I had here was every time we get below 20% power, the coal generator turns on and the natural gas geyser sat here doing absolutely freaking nothing. Great. No, fan flip fantastic. Okay, no, we want to prioritize the natural gas generator for a while while I try to rebuild my coal stockpiles and pray that this geyser sets up soon. Yeah, see, there we go. Now the natural gas geyser's up and running. Oh gosh dang it. No, it's fine. It's fine. Now we're starting to just pump through what little tiny bit of gas we can. It's probably not going to be enough to just remove our reliance on coal, but it sure as heck is going to help. Uh, maybe, maybe something I should do is set up a gas reservoir that can pump in the natural gas. Just in case it turns out that this thing is producing a faster than I can use up the power and therefore it gets overpressured and we're wasting precious natural gas. Maybe? Do you think? I don't freaking know. I don't freaking know, but it's proven to be a problem. I don't know. I'm just scared. I'm scared of whether or not we're going to be able to survive this, because unless I can get a heck of a lot more power, what are we going to do? My only real options would be to move on to something like steam, which means I need to dig, like, down to magma level. I don't love that idea. I don't love that idea at all. It's going to be really hard to get enough power to make all that work. So maybe we need to set up a second hatch farm. You think? Maybe a second hatch farm? Gosh dang it, I hate to think that that's what we need to do, but maybe it is. Let's go ahead and start digging this area out, by the way, and find out what we've got. Looks like it's another cool steam vent. Dang it. Would have loved to find like a hydrogen vent or maybe another natural gas vent or anything along those lines that I could have converted into power. I need more forms of power. I'm just, just not getting it, man. I'm not finding anything that I think I can use. Um, well, I do have a second hatch farm just about done up over here, so we're gonna go ahead and start ranching a whole nother group and double this up. I'm up to 6.9 tons of coal. That's not a lot, but it's all I've got. This is gonna be a huge bottleneck. I thought it was gonna be like the lack of a cold biome for a long time, but now I'm starting to think it's, it's not gonna be the cold biome. It's gonna be the inability to produce a meaningful amount of power without relying on these silly little buck teeth alien to poop out more coal. Oh, we have our first little baby stone hatchling though. That's gotta be counting for something, right? Sort of, kind of progress. <sighs> Give me a gosh dang glossy egg for God's sake. Give me something this episode. I've really accomplished so very little. Maybe we can try setting up at least like some decorations or something. No, like a hanging pot or two in the bedroom, and then maybe we can try placing a little bit of artwork or something. Boost up their morale somehow. I don't know. Dang it all, I'm 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 reaching, man. I want every episode to feel like it accomplishes something significant, but I'll be honest, I feel stuck. 
I've basically insulated almost the entirety of the base. I got that going for me. We did manage to get some of these, um, these dust caps growing. That's working. But it's just not enough. Okay, we are getting our first round of mushroom harvests, though. That's pretty cool. So we've already got fried mushrooms turned on to an infinity job. So I say go ahead and keep delivering them. And good timing, honestly. We've kind of gone down a fair bit in our calories. Look at this. Yeah, the bristle berries and stuff are not going nearly as far as they used to. Fertilizer's important, dude, and I'd fix that if I felt like I had the power to do it. Well, let's go ahead and at least start setting up the basics of getting our power transformers up and running. Whether I can use them or not, we know we're going to need it at some point. So, for example, what I could do is set up a power transformer right along over here. And the way this is going to simply work is we run some heavy wattage wire up this direction and hook it up into the top section like so. Then we have the wire come down here, a quick little wire bridge, and voila. And I would probably disconnect at least a chunk of this, or maybe maybe I would just disconnect these items right here so that this entire area becomes a new circuit that is regulated by the power transformer, right? You can have 6,000 who knows whatever watts on these heavy uh, wattage wires, but this at least brings it down to something manageable so we don't explode all our machines. By the way, I just realized we can't use these blank canvases because I don't have a dedicated artist. Now, if we want to get the heavy watt wire into these power lines, which I plan on having on both sides of the base once again, um, I think you have to use these heavy watt wire joint plates. These wires are not able to uh, go through tiles like the smaller wire wires. That's kind of one reason they're a little bit less convenient. So we're gonna go ahead and break this nonsense and place a heavy watt plate and then the proper use of a medium wire or heavy watt wire connected to both of these would be technically it. And I would just want to have, like, ideally some power generation in this bottom section of the map. And then just run power over here and over here. And then the transformers would just kind of power the entire base. That's what I would consider to be ideal. Oh, this is interesting. I admittedly did not expect that my natural gas pump here was going to overheat once this thing turned back on. I didn't even check to see the temperature. Overheat temperature, 75. What is this putting out? 150 degrees? Holy crap. Yeah, no wonder this thing's going to break. Okay. Um, what's like the melting point of some of this stuff? It's got to be way higher than that, right? Yeah, 1,000 degrees Celsius. So, okay, interesting, good to know. Um, this gas pump ain't gonna work. Um, it is going to break apart for absolute sure now that this thing is up and a running. We need to replace that thing with ideally a gas pump made out of gold amalgam. Increases the overheat temperature by 50 degrees. That said, wait a minute, even then, 125, this thing is outputting at 150. That ain't gonna cut it. That ain't gonna cut it at all. This thing's still gonna freaking melt. I mean, it's gonna be a lot harder to melt, but like, I've got this thing insulated. Unless we cool this room in some way or another, it's gonna be borderline impossible to actually keep this work. Wow. All right, um, unexpected problems are unexpected, but we better find a way to solve that. And here comes the natural gas once again. We were able to swap out the gas pump for the gold amalgam one. So it's overheat temperature is 125, and yeah, the gas is getting up to about 90 degrees or so. I don't know, as we pump this stuff out fast enough, um, do you think that we can keep this temperature more or less under control? I'm not convinced. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. And, and this, is, this is some very hot natural gas that's being pumped into the reservoir as well. Well, on the plus side, at the very least, we're finally starting to stack up a pretty good amount of power. Uh, I don't know why we're still even getting a signal on this coal generator. That thing needs to turn off. This thing needs to be a little bit higher. Why is this not... Wait a minute. Why is this not working? Hello? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What did I mess up? What did I mess up? I did something. I'm sure of it. I did something. What did I do? This thing should be getting some gas. Yes, it is. Is it because of the gas pr uh, vent is overpressured? Is it unable to expel? The pipe is blocked. Uh-huh. Great. So now my problem is that I literally have too much gas? Great. No, it's fine. Um, all we gotta do is just mine some of this nonsense out and free up some more space for the, for the gas to be vented out somewhere. 
There we go, there we go. Finally able to get a little bit of carbon dioxide to build out of this thing. Not by much. Just had to kind of open up a huge pocket for the gas to actually flow into. Now the natural gas generator is up and running. Now we're starting to generate a little bit more power. There we go, there we go. Okay, and I've got the medium, uh, sorry, I keep saying medium. The heavy watt wires all hooked up over here, so technically that's all working. The next step, normally, would be to uh, try to get those wires all the way over to the other side over here, because this is where I want to have my transformers in this direction. Which we can go ahead and build, if we want. Um, at least a couple probably like this would make some sense. But getting those wires all the way over here is going to be a little bit difficult. Okay, now we have two of these generators up and running, and we filled up two of these gas reservoirs, which is probably a really good sign, so okay. How much longer is this thing going to be op uh, active? Good lord, 57 more cycles of plenty of natural gas. Okay, we might actually be fine on power for at least a while. I'm hoping so, anyway, between all of these. Um, although the gas vent overpressure is a problem, but if we can find a solution to that, even if it means just getting a gas pump and dumping it somewhere... I guess that doesn't matter all that much. So now I'm starting to dig out an area with a heavy watt joint plate where I would be able to take these wires and start taking them all the way over to this side of the base. Also, I need somebody who's good at art. I don't think anyone in particular is good at art here in this group. Um, I've kind of avoided that. You know what, Viola? Congrats. You get to be my art fundamentals person. You get to be an art student. Go paint whatever garbage you want on these blank canvases. Anything's an improvement at this point. Good lord. All right, when I said I expected the art to be bad, like, I didn't really expect it to be that bad, if you know what I mean. But okay, sure, whatever. I mean, it does still provide some level of decor, 18. It's not a lot. Uh, in contrast, this plant is worth, uh, what? It's, it's worth, I don't actually see, uh, 25. So this ugly briar plant is literally more beautiful than this painting, but you know what? How else are we expecting anyone to get better? This is how all aspiring artists start, probably. Okay, I managed to get the heavy watt wires all the way over here, which means now what I can do is start breaking things up into logical circuits. So for example, I probably do not want to see this connected anymore. I want all the power generators all going down one big heavy watt thing so I can keep adding on to it without worrying about blowing anything up. So we'll do that, and then following that all the way over here, this is all on one circuit. This could all be under another, probably, if I wanted to. Just a tiny bit more, and there we go. Now this transformer's up and running, and everything is on a separate grid here. Cool. What have we accomplished with this? Well, with this extraordinary expensive resources, all we've managed to do is guarantee that no longer is any of our stuff gonna overload. That's it, that's all we've done. We, we hadn't overloaded yet either, but that's fine. We're future-proofing. We're future-proofing like crazy here. And this is all gonna work really well for us for pretty much the rest of the game. We'll just have a couple of trenches up this direction, up this direction with these heavy powers. And as long as we don't expand the base too much in either direction, the power transformers, we'll be able to take care of literally everything else I can build from here on out. Let's go ahead and look at getting this fertilizer synthesizer up and a running, because this is one thing I wanted to use some of my polluted water for. So we'll do that and have you come down like this. I think that's all we need, and then we can start making some fertilizer using phosphorite. So Sweet! Okay, and let's actually go ahead and place down a quick little storage bin right here. It's gonna hold nothing but phosphorite and maybe some fertilizer. And if you even wanted to set up an auto sweeper at some point, we could absolutely do things like that. But in the meantime, this has been a very long recording session for me to accomplish not nearly as much as I would have liked. So I think we're gonna end this video here. Next video, the goal has to be to solve some of our gas problems, specifically by getting a lot more oxygen and by getting some cooling in place. We've got this polluted water just sitting here doing nothing with a dormant slush geyser. We should go ahead and start using it to either cool off some natural gas so this thing doesn't blow up, which actually so far it's holding together okay, or to start cooling off some fresh oxygen because this base is starting to warm up. And I don't like that. Thank y'all for watching, hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.